Marty Coleman is here now with Medical Watch and the extraordinary impact of organ donation. This is National Organ and Tissue Donation Awareness Week, and across our country, there are almost 4,200 people waiting for organ transplants. And 371 of those people are right here in the Capital Health region. And it's not just for organ donations. Thanks to surgical advances, tissue donations are saving lives, too. We're grateful today to have a few of those participants here with us this morning. He's a busy little one-year-old, and he's come a long way. This time last year, Samuel Bentley was in intensive care, recovering from open-heart surgery. I can't imagine being in the position of not having him. And if people don't donate their organs and their tissues, then that they would be in a situation where they less, less of them don't have to be in. Would you like to come up to the podium? Donated their son's organs after the 11-year-old died of a brain aneurysm. All right, take a look at these photographs of some robins. Dallas we met got a new liver nine years ago. I was on life support and they I, they said I had four hours left to live and luckily a, a liver came in for for the donors and donations from outside the region. But that's not enough. Thirty one people die on organ transplant waiting lists. We still have approximately thirty to fifty percent of people that don't consent on behalf of their families to donate organs when they're in that tragic episode where uh, people are brain dead. The discussion most commonly comes during end-of-life care, but Cindy Siddons has proof that's not her gift. Complications during a kidney... Anonymously to whoever needed it. I knew that there was somebody out there who needed it a whole lot more than I did. She saved the life of someone she doesn't know, just like someone else did for Samuel. It's mind-boggling to think about, you know, another family had to lose their... Really? But the Bentley family was all signed up. Mike works in the transplant section at Capital Health. A year ago, his son became... Well, more... ...valve at just one day old. It's, it's like, it might... ...made a stop at the legislature this morning. It was met by the Premier and students from Victoria School. And the relay started last October to bring people from across Canada together to come up the cause. It is a movement that encompasses all of Canada, the resulting in awareness and action on the critical shortage of organ and tissue donations uh, in our country. And what the kids are doing here today are, are terrific. They're, they're, they're ambassadors for Edmonton and they're bringing this important message to everybody. And in this weather, no doubt, the students then took the torch from the legislature back to Victoria School. Well, we have heard sign their donor card. Well, meet Dallas and meet little Samuel. I make sure that when I talk to people about him, when they ask questions about him, I do tell them that he received a donor valve. Interesting stat here for you. There are more than 500 Albertans currently waiting for a transplant. Well, some students are doing their part trying to raise awareness. They're taking part in the cross-country relay to uh, get your attention focused on organ donation. <laughs> I want to inspire everyone in Edmonton to become an organ donor. Premier Ed Stelmack helped kick off the Edmonton leg of the Torch of Life relay. He handed off the torch to students from Victoria School. Now, the relay started in St. John's, Newfoundland in October. Organizers hope to open Canadians' eyes to the growing need for organs. Seriously about using the opt-out system where everybody's already registered unless you opt out. And, and we've been encouraging that for seven, eight years now. It's working successfully in 20 other countries, and they're leading the world in organ donations. I mentioned earlier the 500 Albertans waiting for their miracle. Nationwide number, 4,000. That's 4,000 Canadians in need of an organ transplant. Still ahead on your city, she is an... 7355. Well, the importance of organ donations is being discussed in our city today, and it was being delivered by many younger Albertans who want to see an increase in the number of lives being saved. Stay with us. I'm Bob Layton, the police. They, they, they did like about five minutes because they did some other stories on it as well. Yeah. Once again, starting off at minus 11, we'll get to minus 4. Just at the ledge so far, I see, yeah. We're looking at about 2 to 
30 centimeters of further accumulations between now yeah they wanted to make sure they got a they had a, a good shot so yeah that's right tomorrow night here's your six days so zero wednesday keeping in mind we have all this snow cover now very hard for the earth to absorb the heat from the sun with all the snow cover it reflects back which is how our temperatures are reflected here rain snow mix for thursday at two friday highs of plus four rain snow mix that day too Saturday looking a little more promising. We'll get some big melt going on there, 10 degrees and sunny. And then 14 on the way for Sunday. So yep. finally a little bright spot towards the end of the six day. Okay, days. no problem. Starting off of around zero that day. Yep, yep. So you want to join our extreme weather team. We are now recruiting for the Global Ground Force. Be part of Global Edmonton's extreme yeah, Perfect. Weather also look in the Metro News. We are looking for 12 yep, members. you got an Edmonton Metro News. It's free. Northern regions, in and around the city, south of the city, yep. west of the city. We want everybody. Yep. Uh, deadline is until May the, tw the second, rather. Thank you, Jelena yep. Drugs, for providing digital okay. service to the members of our All right. workforce. Plus, you get okay, an umbrella and some weather Bye. reporting equipment, and you'll be fully trained as well uh, to spot extreme weather in your region. We want you to join Ground Force, so sign up on our website. Thousands of Canadians are in desperate need of an organ donation. There is a critical shortage, but students across the country are trying to change that. Today, they took their message to the steps of the legislature. It is a message of hope, and it's uh, how every individual has the potential to save lives. Students from Victoria High School passed the torch of life to our premier today to mark the start of National Organ and Tissue Donation Awareness Week. Relay started on the East Coast in St. John's and will end in Nunavut in June. Students are calling on you to become an organ donor. Kendra Sagoski tells us why. Samuel Bentley just turned one. Like most babies his age, he's testing his parents' patience. He is a normal kid. I mean, he's, you wouldn't know. I mean, he's into stuff. He's, he's in the biting and hitting stage. He's going through all the normal baby stuff. But Samuel has already gone through more than most of us can imagine. Born with a heart defect at just one day old, he underwent heart surgery and received a new valve. There was a little scar on his chest. A lot of times you forget. But Samuel's parents will never forget the generosity of strangers. It's, it's unthinkable and it's, it just makes you feel so grateful to that family. We owe his life to someone else who, who had a child that died and they decided to make the choice, you know, through all their grief and pain to help someone else. And That's why doctors and donor recipients are stressing the importance of signing your license to become an organ and tissue donor and telling family about your wishes. Over the past year, at least 31 Albertans have died waiting for an organ. We only had 29 uh, organ donors this year. Those don't include living related donors, which uh, does not uh, match the demand for organs. Just one organ and tissue donor can help up to 80 people. Cindy Siddons is a donor. She made the decision in just 24 hours. My doctor tried to talk me out of it. You know, everybody's kind of like, why do you want to do this? And to me, I just knew it was the right thing to do. Two years ago, Cindy went in for a kidney stone operation. That's when she decided to give up one of her kidneys. So it's fulfilled my life. It's really gave it meaning, and that's the best thing. The best thing for the Bentleys is an active, healthy little boy. You know, you're not allowed to know who the donor families are, so we don't even know who to thank. All we do is thank everyone. Kendra Slagowski, Global News. Samuel's father, Mike, also happens to manage the organ and tissue program for Capital Health. Right now, 560 Albertans are waiting for transplants. New research confirms that an active lifestyle can help cancer survivors stay...